So, let's have episode 11. And as promised, I will give you the summary of the interpolation process. And in the next episode after this, we are going to get the effective interest rate for debts or receivables with only one year maturity term. So let's start the interpolation summary after this short intro. So let's have the summary. So the ultimate goal for summarizing the interpolation process is not just to summarize, but also to remind you very important things so that you'll be able to get the effective rate faster. And actually, if you will not follow the process that I will tell you later, then you'll be wasting your time, especially in the trial and error phase. Because let's face it, there are a lot of rates that can be tried and there are a lot of rates that can be the effective interest rate. But if you follow, then you can get the any effective rate by performing at most two trial and errors and two interpolations only. Again, it's only at most two trial and errors and two interpolations only. And in order for me to be effective in discussing, so let's have this. So this is the problem that we have been solving for in the past episodes. And you are already familiar with it, right? So let's start with the reminder number one, which is you need to know when to interpolate. So when to interpolate? Answer, if there is a problem where someone incurred a debt, but there is no interest rate given. Like for example, you were given a loan proceeds of 5 million and you are going to pay that with 6 million after 5 years. So it's very clear that there is an interest charge because you were only given 5 million but you are to pay 6 million. So the future payment is greater by 1 million. But how much is that interest if it will be expressed in annual percentage? So to answer that, you will need to interpolate. And you need to find the rate that will turn the future payment of 6 million to 5 million, which should be the present value now. Okay? And even if there is a rate given, if the proceeds received is different from the principal, then you need to interpolate. Like in this problem, there is a nominal rate of 7%, but since the proceeds is only 4 million and the principal is 4,250,000, we did the interpolation process in the past episodes, right? But if the proceeds is equal to the principal, no need to interpolate. The nominal rate is automatically the effective rate. So again, reminder number one, you need to know when to interpolate. So reminder number two is up next after this. Reminder number two. So before you do the trial and error, you need to consider this because these things have already been proven in the past episodes. So number one, if proceeds is equivalent to the principal, then effective interest rate is equal to the nominal rate. And number two, if proceeds are lesser than the principal, then the effective rate must be higher than the nominal rate. And again, this has already been proven. And lastly, if it's the opposite and the proceeds is actually higher than the principal, then effective rate must be lower than the nominal rate. And if you consider this three, then you'll be able to determine if the effective rate is below or above the nominal rate. And it will narrow the options for the effective rate that you're looking for. And if you can still remember, we tried a rate higher than 7% in this problem because the proceeds here is lower than the principal. So that's reminder number two, which is to consider this in order to know if the effective rate is higher or lower than the nominal rate. Now let's go to reminder number three. So this is already during the trial and error. So during the trial and error phase, 
use the nominal rate plus 3 to 5% or minus 3 to 5% depending on the proceeds versus the principal amounts. So what do I mean? Example, in the past episodes, we used 7% nominal rate plus 3% which is why we tried to get the present value using 10% rate. And this was our computation. And again, we did that because the proceeds received here is lesser than the principal. Well, if it's reversed, so in this example, if the proceeds here is greater than the principal, then I should have tried nominal rate of 7% minus 3%. Or the 4%. Anyways, you can actually use plus or minus 4 or plus or minus 5%. It's up to you actually. Well, to be honest, this plus or minus 3 to 5% is just based on my judgment and many experiences in solving problems. Now, moving on. If you're finished getting the present value using the nominal rate plus or minus 3 to 5% like this one, then it's time to get the second rate to be tried. And that would be on reminder number 4. Now let's have reminder 4. So reminder 4 goes like this. So use the nominal rate and the principal as one of the trial rates and the present value in the trial and error phase. And this is done in order to save time. Because again, it has already been proven that if you use the nominal rate in getting the present value of the principal plus the present value of the interest, you will actually get the principal amount as the present value. So if you do that, then the two rates that you tried and their present values should be arranged like this with x on the third line as the effective rate and that is equal to the desired present value which is in this problem is 4 million. So moving on, we have reminder number 5 which is the interpolation process already. So to remind you of the interpolation process, as I have told you, it starts with putting the brackets. And next is getting the differences of the numbers enclosed in the brackets. And then you can make two fractions already. So, the difference of these first two numbers in both sides becomes the numerator. And the difference of this first and the third numbers in both sides also will become the denominator. However, the difference of this here, the first and the third, will be temporarily called D because it cannot be found out, right? And if you have the fractions already, the next thing that you should do is to cross multiply. And the results will be used in finding the D later. And if the D is already found, like this here, you need to equate it with the original equation for D which is this first interest rate minus x. And if you simplify the equation, finally, you will get the supposed to be x or the supposed to be effective rate. But I'll be honest, this might not result to the effective rate that we are looking for. Because normally, in the first trial and error, the present values derived from the two trial rates is normally far from the desired present value. Like these two here, they are somewhat far from to 4 million. So expect that the effective rate that you have calculated is not that accurate. That is why we need to proceed to reminder number 6. But that would be after this. So reminder number 6. So after getting the supposed to be effective rate from the first interpolation, you need to get the present value of the principal and interest using the effective rate calculated, just like what we did with this. So this is our calculation in the past episodes. And after that, 
we have reminder number 7. So reminder number 7, if the PV is a little bit far from the desired present value, then we need to repeat the trial and error. And we need to use the effective rate computed and its present value as one of the trial rates. And in the past episodes, we did that. And the results of this one were used here in the first line. So how about the second line here? How did we fill this up? So that's on reminder number eight. When deciding for the second trial rate, remember that rates and PV amounts have an inverse relationship. So you either increase or decrease the first trial rate. So what we did in the past episode is reduce the rate because we wanted to increase the PV amounts from this 3,993,681 to 4 million. Okay? So guys, always remember that rates and present values have an inverse relationship. Meaning, if you wanted to increase the PV amount, then you need to lower the rates. And if you wanted to decrease the PV amounts, then you need to try higher rates. So that's reminder number eight. Now, let's go to the last reminder, reminder number nine. So if there are already two rates with their present values, and those present values are very near to the desired present value, just like these two here, they are very close to 4 million, then interpolate again for the last time. So, that's it for interpolation. So, again, if you follow those reminders and steps, you can get the effective interest rate in just two interpolations. So, again, this is the last episode for interpolation in the present value series. And actually, guys, I have another method of interpolation. So, it's different. And it was discussed in my past videos on time value of money. So if you want to see that, go to my channel and go to my playlist and select the time value of money playlist or the mathematics of investment playlist. So in the next episode, we will get the effective interest rate for debts or receivables with one year maturity term only. So that's it for this video. And if you learned, please click like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and select all to be updated on my next videos. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.